Hard to believe it was 10 months ago. I was standing here with a real doozy of a COVID hairdo, taking a first crack at the Hisense H8G. Lots has happened since then, and now here we stand with that TV's replacement and the first Hisense TV for 2021. Something tells me we're about to light this room up. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and I hope you enjoyed that little walk down memory lane with me. Here we are today though with the Hisense U8G and you can tell by the box it's boasting everything. 120 hertz native panel, quantum dots, up to 1500 nits of brightness for HDR, Dolby Vision, IMAX enhanced. Yeah, this thing has all the logos. But I really wanna see how Hisense is handling color this year and also its backlighting algorithm. Before I can get into that, I'm gonna unbox this thing, show you how to set it up, dip into the picture settings and then get some initial impressions. So let's get to it, shall we? Before I start cutting into this box, if you know someone who is looking for an affordable, bright LED TV this year, would you do me a favor and share this video with them? Facebook, Twitter, your IG DMs, whatever. We just wanna help as many folks as we can. Also, please like and subscribe. We are so close to 800,000 subs and well on our way to a million. Thanks so much for your support. And as always, links in the description for the products you see in our videos. Thanks, you're awesome, let's go. Okay, here's everything that comes in the box and we've got a two piece stand. I think that this is a two position stand, one narrow, one wide, we'll see in a moment. Power cable for the TV, a rather wobbly remote, batteries for the remote, screws, and then we've got a breakout cable. We don't need this. So I was mistaken, there's only one place to put the stand and it is in the center, so we'll go with that. And really, this could not be more simple. We're just gonna slot this into place and then we have two screws. Switch to the other side and resume screwing. And here we are, that was certainly very easy. Let's take a look at the back of the TV and we've got a power port over on the far left as well as a channel here for cable management and then there's clips down towards the feet uh, to sort of route things out toward the back of the TV. And then on the far side, we've got our input bay with four HDMI inputs. And what I noticed was HDMI one and two are 4K 60, while three and four are 4K 120 Hertz. Whether that's full HDMI 2.1 bandwidth, we don't know yet, but we will definitely be testing that for the full review. Okay, so we flipped the TV around, took off some plastic as you saw, and now we're finally getting a feel for the aesthetic of the TV. And the first thing I notice is that it's not a particularly thin TV. It's actually on the thicker side. We have been looking at a lot of high-end thin TVs lately, but it's still on the thick side. Not sure that's gonna matter, and I can forgive it if it has a really great backlighting system or a really great sound system. We'll find out soon enough. As for the bezels, there's not much there, and what is there is a very dark gray. Uh, it's almost as if the glass screen sort of sits on top of a slate, and I like that look. The band down at the bottom is a dark brushed metal, matches well with the stand, and as far as the stand goes, I'm okay with it. I think I think it reaches a nice compromise between having feet at the very edges of the TV and going with a center pedestal. With that out of the way, let's turn this thing on. So once we power the TV on, it's really apparent that this is an Android TV, if you didn't see that on the box. Not Google TV. I will be asking Hisense if they're gonna provide an update down the road maybe to make this a Google TV platform, but for now, it's gonna be Android TV. So standard Android TV setup stuff, you're gonna start with your region, uh, your time zone, you need to put in your zip code. Uh, it'll ask you to pair the remote, which oddly enough, the remote's already paired, so I just skipped that step. Uh, we're connected to the ethernet, that is correct. We would do Wi-Fi there if necessary. And then we get to the Google portion of things. You can use your computer for this part. I'm going to use my phone, get me all logged in, accept some terms of service, allow location. Uh, and this is all about what kind of information you're going to share with uh, Google. The permissions thing is going to continue when it comes to whether you're going to enable Google Assistant or not. Keep in mind there is a mic in the remote control uh, so you can just press a button and call up Google Assistant that way or if you want to do it hands-free you can enable the mic inside the TV. Next is a rather long list of apps that you can choose to install or not install. Might wanna take a second to go through all these because if you leave it by default, it's gonna put them all in there and you probably don't want that. Keep in mind, you can always add apps that you want to directly from the Google Play Store later. 
Next is another long list of terms and conditions, whether you want to provide Google with information, whether you want to provide Hisense with information, definitely take this into consideration. I mean, there's a lot of privacy implications here. Ultimately, you land with a QR code for registration. I definitely do suggest registering your product in case there's any issue with warranty down the line. And with that, our initial setup at least is done. Next is something I was not expecting at all, Alfonso. Not something I'm familiar with. I imagine I'll be hearing from Hisense about this. What I can see is that it would enable adaptive picture quality, adaptive audio quality, and relative advertising, which I hate. I just gotta be honest with you there. I am not interested in any of these features. Uh, you should definitely try them out yourself if you want to. I think what bugs me here is that if I did want the adaptive picture quality or audio quality, I'd have to have relevant advertising as part of that. Um, so no, I'm just gonna say no on that. Here we've landed at the Android home screen and we're already being advertised to uh, through the suggested content, both at the top and then on individual app rows. I'm not too worried about that right now. What I really wanna do is get into settings and there isn't a settings button on the remote itself. So you'll need to access it from the screen. Clearly what I'm into is the picture settings. That's what I always start with. So we've gone into that area and we see that we're in energy saving picture mode. We do not want that. That's gonna limit brightness among other implications. So I'm gonna start with theater day and if that turns out to be too bright, then we'll address it. We can always switch to theater night a little bit later. Now we'll go into the backlight setting and it looks like the local dimming is set to high. We'll stick with that for now, though I reserve the right to change that and we'll discuss what kind of difference it makes in the full review. Backlight level is at 80, meaning that it's probably pretty bright. We'll see that go up to 100 in HDR modes. Automatic light sensor is off and this is what I want because I do not want it changing the brightness based on ambient light. I want it fixed, so we'll leave that there. The rest of these settings are fine as defaults until I can really dig in and measure this stuff. I wanna go into the advanced settings before I apply everything to all sources, which is always a handy thing to have, by the way. So this is interesting. Color temperature is set to low. Normally we'd see terms like warm or cool. I guess low is warm? We'll find out for sure. I'm definitely leaving it default since that's what's set for theater day mode. Motion enhancement, we will turn that off. We can argue in the comments later if you want to. Motion clearness already off, that's probably de-blur. You know, a lot of these naming conventions are weird to me. The rest of this looks fine to me. Um, filmmaker mode auto detection. This would be for movies, I believe. I'm gonna have to check with Hisense on this. I'm actually gonna turn this off because I don't want it necessarily going into filmmaker mode automatically for me. Here we see FreeSync is turned off and it's actually disabled. Uh, we'll probably see this go active once we start up a game console. Next, we'll just pop into the calibration settings just to see what's there. And it looks like this is where we do color tuning. I adjust the white balance. We've got a gamma selection here, a specific gamma calibration, which is interesting. I haven't seen that before. So now I know where those things are for my measurements later. So with that done, I'm happy to see that we're applying this to all sources. I don't know if that includes apps as well as HDMI sources, so let's look into that. Okay, so I've pulled up an SDR title on YouTube and pressed pause, and I have to correct myself, there is a menu button on the remote, so we can access picture settings without having to navigate through Android TV. And I'm very happy to see that theater day mode has been selected, and I assume that it has also accepted all of my advanced settings, but we'll double check just in case. And sure enough, everything is exactly the same. So that's great, that's a huge convenience. Now let's see what uh, it did with HDR. So I'm now in an HDR title, pause, pull up the menu, go into picture, and it looks like we're in HDR energy savings. So okay, while we made some SDR settings and they carried over to the apps as well as the HDMI settings, it looks like we're gonna still have to do something for HDR and Dolby Vision. So I want out of HDR energy saving and I'll select HDR theater because that's probably the most accurate, but I'm curious to check out IMAX mode. That'll be a first for me. So HDR theater for now, immediately the color warms up go down to advanced settings. Color temperature is low, so warm. And then motion enhancement, we'll turn that off. And it looks like filmmaker mode auto detection also needs to be turned off, at least for my testing. Uh, and then we should be good to go with that. Hopefully that will apply those HDR picture settings to all sources as it did before. Now I've paused on a Dolby Vision title on Netflix. Let's go into picture settings and we're in Dolby Vision IQ mode. Now I wanna take a moment to talk about what Dolby Vision IQ is in the full review. For now, I'm gonna go with Dolby Vision Dark and go back and forth between Dark and IQ. 
I want to go down to the advanced settings once again. Looks like color temperature is low and because it's Dolby Vision, all of the motion enhancement and smoothing has been turned off. So that's fantastic. Also, auto detection for filmmaker mode is turned off. That's something Dolby probably specified as a requirement. That's one of the great things about Dolby is that they have control and you know what you're getting when you get into Dolby. Calibration settings, here we go again. Gamma has been locked down as has gamma calibration. And once again, that's because Dolby has control over that stuff. It's an end to end solution. Up here, it looks like the picture settings are only for the current source. I'm gonna select all sources. Uh, that was not the default for the others. So at this point, anytime I go into Dolby Vision, I expect to uh, be in Dolby Vision Dark. So first impressions, well, I like what I see so far. I definitely need to get this TV into a dark room to see how the backlight behaves. Is it quick enough? Uh, but I'm not seeing a whole lot of blooming right out of the gate, which is really encouraging to me. Also, the color looks more accurate than I'm used to seeing with a high sense. Definitely need to check out some motion stuff as well. In fact, there's a lot of considerations. We need to measure this TV and see what's what, but I'm looking forward to doing all of that. I can say though, I'm highly encouraged and I can't wait to get to the full review. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Do you think the U8G is gonna be a real contender this year? Let me know about that down in the comments. And while you're down there, please click like and subscribe so we can continue to grow this channel. And here's two other videos that I think you'll like.